Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Overwatch Central. So Roadhog is a good hero right now. I don't really need to explain that to you. So I thought now is a good opportunity to sit down with a top 10 EU player and also a pro Smex about playing the Hog and how to properly utilize him and how to really carry on him, I guess. Without further ado, let's get started. Introductions first, who are you? Your sort of past experience would be the pro and all that jazz, but also why should people be playing Roadhog right now? Um. I am Smex. I played uh, the flex role in Team UK in the World Cup, and people should be playing Hog right now because he's insane in solo queue for just taking the whole game into your own hands, in the right hands. You just have everything you need to win the game. You're, you're in health, healing, you're your own tank, and you got the damage you need to like push through. The last time that we spoke about Hog was when his damage was nerfed, he got an extra shot. And that was about six months ago when everybody was saying that he was trash. Nowadays, it's been a slow climb up. He's obviously been buffed in that time. But, like, can you really express how good he is right now, really? Because I think he's one of those heroes that can do a bit of everything. And really, if there's, I guess most people have said if there's one hero that you want to climb with, it's Hog. Yeah, the, the reason, like, he's so insanely good now is because the whole he can move while healing and he gets a 50% reduction on it. It, may, it allows him to, like... like make plays that he shouldn't be allowed to make. And he's, you can also use him as like a big bait as well. So if the whole enemy team is like shooting you as a hog and you press E and you're getting healed and you cut off 50% of their damage, then like that creates so much space for like the rest of your team as well. So you're not just solo carrying the game. You're actually creating space for other people. With you saying like with hog being a situational pick in the pro scene it's kind of the opposite in ladder like he's kind of all encompassing can be used in any team solo tanking all that jazz like i guess that's what he lends himself to is being that flexible that you know sometimes winston isn't the best sometimes reinhardt or arisa isn't the best on certain maps but hulk always seems to be a really good pick yeah that mostly comes down to the fact that he can do this like 1v2 stuff where he can like sit in a corridor and make sure like the enemy team doesn't get past it. Like I do the same in comp where I have I play Hog on pretty much every map except the Barney because he's just he just works everywhere. Like Gibraltar first, he works because he can like, sit there and hold the corner so that like the tanks and the supports just can't go past you, which makes him really strong. But and, and then like just and then Dorado as well. Like on second, he's still good if he just sits underneath the point and waits for people to drop. Like, you, you can always find a way to make Hog useful in a situation, apart from on the Barney. The Barney's the only map where you can't do that. Even then, it's only like the first point in the Barney that would be bad for him. Yeah. When you get onto I mean, the yeah. actual track of it, it's flat anyway, so you can make that work. But I think it really comes down to, Roadhog's one of those heroes that he's easy to sort of pick up and play in that, but I think players can still get his win conditions wrong. Like, if you're going into a game, just sort of try to picture a map that you've played before, what are you trying to do? What are your win conditions? What is your role within a team almost? Are you there to peel for your team? Are you there to just flank and get picks? There's so many different ways to play Roadhog, but for you, what is the most optimal to actually just win in a game? Well, the best way I look at it is to like, look at what your opponents are playing. Right? So if they got this tracer that's going into your backline and killing your backline all the time, just if you can predict like where she's going to go, where she's going to come from, you can just sit there, camp a corner, and get the hook on the tracer before the fight even starts, and it's, you pretty much just win the fight off of that. Especially if it's like uh, if it's a no ult fight, so that makes it really easy. But if they're playing uh, like a bit more defensive, they have like their uh, more pokey heroes like McCree and Soldier. You kind of want to play kind of stealthily, right? You want to like get close enough to them so you're not you losing all your health. You don't have to use your E, your heal before you get close enough to hook them. And you don't want to be seen, right? Because if you get see once you're, as soon as you're seen by the enemy team, it's come so much harder to get the hook on like soldiers and stuff because they can just AD AD strafe it. McCree's can roll it if they want to, and if an Ana sees you, you get slept, and you can't stop that. Even if you throw the hook, the sleep dart will still hit you, and you'll still go to sleep, and your hook will go on cooldown, and you pretty much just die at that point. So, um, my biggest advice is just to. Really, like, really look at how uh, the map like gives you an advantage as a hog player and the enemy team comp. So, like, Horizon the first point is a really good one because you can play Arisa there, play Arisa Torb if you really want to. But if you 
see the tracer because the tracer will always blink in first ahead of her team and she'll either go up the staircase up the left of the high ground if you see her do that she'll use all her blinks getting to the staircase so you actually have the time from to walk from the middle up your staircase to go to the top and you can just throw a hook at the staircase and you'll just kill you'll land the hook on the tracer and you'll get a pick before the game even starts and you can do the same on the right because she'll use all three blinks to go right and then she'll just be walking in the room and she won't have any way to dodge you unless she uses recall which at that point that gives your team a bunch of time on the first fight to like it just takes a lot of pressure off yeah she has to like reset everything no, that makes sense so yeah so you can just land the hook on her there and that's fine what's a good map to describe this dorado first point dorado know. first yeah you, you have two choices right you can I like I, I never like I never go on the payload. I ever go up the small staircase and look for a hook onto the high ground, or I'll go all the way under and I'll come up behind them, and I'll <laughs> get them. I'll get them to like either shoot me on purpose, right, so that we can like like take the pressure off my take their teammates interest, on the front. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if, if if they chase me, that's even better. If they drop to chase me, then you can turn and win. But um, at that point, you just kind of like want to take away the attention from the payload onto yourself. Just so that you can get through this little high ground at the start, because it can be really hard sometimes. So do you almost play it in a way that I think, you know, when you look at Winston, your job is to basically not die, to just jump on the payload, zap everybody, get ultimate charge, put your shield down. As soon as you get low, jump out, get healed up, jump in, use your roll, just basically to stall on the point. Would you say for Hog, then, it's a little bit different? It's more try and... Because Roadhog's really good at taking the pressure onto the tanks. Like, if you're playing in Reinhardt and running into a Roadhog, it's going to be horrible because you're there just to put so much damage and pressure onto his shield that you can't fire strike, you can't really ult, you've got him, like, under your thumb. So would you say that playing Hog is more about trying to take the fight away from the point as opposed to trying to stall on it? Yeah, yeah, that's, exa yeah, that's exactly what you kind of want to do as Hog. You want to make the enemy's tank line as miserable as possible or you want to uh, just kill their back line. Right. So, so let's say, for example, I got a good example on Lee Jung uh, Control Center. I like to at the, on the first fight. I like to instead of going up the staircase where like the Jung crash map and stuff, I go through dark, through the dark server room, uh, left or right out of spawn, and then I look to hook the Reinhardt from the side. Right, I just pull him away from his team. At, sometimes I just can, that wins fights fights on its own because your team can just see the enemy backline. But also, this Ryan is like completely out of position now, and then people start chasing you. And they like follow you into the server room, and then your team just kind of likes to stand in there in front of them while you are creating all this space you for force them to, them to go like want. on a detour almost. Yeah, because the team's not going to leave the Reinhardt, and if he does, he dies, and they don't have a shield. So, I guess I, I guess the risk with that is that you're constantly playing like flank hog. You're constantly playing on your own, and that kind of goes onto the idea of like uh, the next question, which is like, what big mistakes do you see from like other hog players, either in your games? Because even though you'd be playing against top five hundred people. You know, you you are a pro. You play in the pro scene. You've obviously got that advantage over a lot of people. But even like some diamond, gold, road hogs that you see now and again, like what big mistakes do you see there? I feel like the mistake I see a lot is them trying to do too much as road hog. You know, where they think he's actually invincible all the time, rather than looking after their cooldowns. Like playing around your cooldowns as road hog is really important, especially now with the heal. Like if you if you miss your hook, right? Okay, that's fine. If you use your heal to get away, that's also fine. But if you got whole hook, right? Uh, you can't just walk straight back into that fight with none of your cooldowns up because you'll 100% die. Especially if they have any kind of like crowd control um, as well. Like I see a lot of hulks trying to do this like one-man army thing where they'll solo flank, not wait until their team engages on them so they can like uh, get a pick and then get away with it. But they'll just straight up just hook someone uh, without counting if like there's Arius use bubble or if the diva's nearby or if there's an Ana nearby stuff like that. So what you just need to be careful of is just uh, counting enemy cooldowns and watching the time of when you're going for your picks. Uh, I think that's I think that's the best advice I could give. Um, from some of the mistakes I see. There is a little bit of skill needed to play Hog, at least to get the most out of him, you know, making sure that you have the distance between your shots. Um, when it comes to aiming this Hog, have you got any like advice there? And then I also want to talk about the hook as well, because the hook is such a pivotal part of his kit. Even with just not just landing it, but who to try and land the hook on, who's your priority half the time. But we'll start with like aiming first, because the right click, 
feels so good when you one shot. Yeah, the right like click that. is actually extremely hard. Like from how I do it, I just kind of feel it, right? It's like Hanzo where you shoot an arrow, you just feel that it's gonna hit. It's kind of the same thing, but the best way I can describe it, like mechanically, is that so when you watch the direction that they're walking in, um, if you think they're gonna go the other direction, like quickly try flick it back and right click in that direction ahead of them. Make sure that when you right-click, you're never directly aiming on the person unless they're walking towards you in a straight line. Like, that's the big thing. So, if they're walking to the left, then make sure you're aiming, like, a little bit in front of them. If they're walking to the right, same thing. Um, ver vertically, it's a bit harder to do, because uh, people move a lot faster vertically in this game than they do left and right. So, you just... that's Yeah, that's the best way to explain it. You just gotta... I have a counter predict when you think they're gonna like dodge you, or if you think they're just gonna walk in the straight line, then you just aim a little bit in front of them. What about the left click then? Is that still feels straightforward to do, but probably not? It's pretty much hit scan, depending on like the range you're using it. If you're like in close range, then just aim on the person, and it should be fine. Um, there's no need for prediction at that range because the projectile leaves the gun and hits the person pretty much instantly. Especially. A good example is when you hook someone, you don't have to like predict <laughs> that they're going to move and stuff like that. What about the hook as well? Because again, so much relies on Roadhog getting those hooks that sometimes it can be really difficult to land on the right targets. And then also, who are the right targets? Yeah, so it. So let's do the right targets first. So if you think the enemy team has an ult, that's going to be like really important in the next fight. So Visor, Genji ult. Um, even like Zarya, like if you pick Hook and the Zarya before the fight starts, it's really big, just force and grab. Um, then those are all like, all, those are all priority targets, right? The next priority target is probably D.Va at this point. I, like, a lot of people play D.Va, so that's who you want to hook. If you can D Mecha, then you can like have free roam in that fight from there on out because D.Va is the only thing in the game that stops you from killing your like. Uh, opponents reliably with the hook and she also like cancels out your pressure from your right clicks so diva's like next and then supports supports are going to be the next thing but they're like usually extremely far out of the picture so unless you're flanking that's not really a priority you want to kill the flankers and peel more that's the way you want to go for so tracers genjis um doomfists as well if the enemy had to, if the enemy team has a doomfist don't even bother thinking about uh like trying to flank and stuff like that. Just sit on your support line. As soon as the Doomfist comes in, you can hit the hook on him and just win, the f like kill him instantly. Like the best way to do this is just sit behind your Ana because he's always gonna land in front of the Ana um, to do his combo, which is the E shift, like and shot stuff. Um, so the hook itself, it doesn't lock its uh, like where it's gonna go until like halfway through the hook animation so you can do so you can I do this thing sometimes where I like I like shake it I, I try to track the, where people are gonna go and then I flick it and it's like it's like the right click right so if you think they're gonna um, dodge the other way then you counter like flick the hook midway through the animation to get to land it on them it works most of the time um, but sometimes I run into this problem where I flick too far. Like it can happen sometimes when uh, they when I do like small AD AD and then they do like one long one. Like, that can happen sometimes. It, it happens like to a lot of people. But that's the best way to land the hook when someone's looking at you. When they're not looking at you, make sure you line yourself up for an easy hook. So don't make it more difficult for yourself. So if they're like if they don't see you and they go an AD AD, don't. Try to just walk to the side of him and just get like the straight hook on him rather than making it more difficult for yourself. Because I've had really embarrassing moments in, in uh, scrims and tournament games where I miss a hook and just directly behind someone when they don't know I'm there just because I try to go for this hook. It's definitely more difficult than one I could have just positioned two seconds to get an easier hook on. We've kind of gone over when he isn't good, like in terms of maps and stuff, but are there any other things that you want to go over in terms of when not to play Roadhog, when you should maybe switch to something else? Um, so when the enemy team is playing, like, 
This is more map specific, but King's Row? It's really hard to play uh, Hulk against a Mercy Zen Junkrat on King's Row. Uh, the, you just don't, you can't get anything done because the Junkrat is just putting too much pressure out with this damage boost and this Discord. I think if you get hit by both, it's like 200 damage or something like that, which is like one third of your health just gone straight away. So that's more map specific against comps. Um, if you're having difficulty landing the hooks on the tracers and the Genjis, then you know you can maybe look to change there, something more reliable like Monkey or Diva, and play more Peely. If the enemy team has a Zarya and a Diva, I usually change at that point because. The whole comp is just built to stop Rodol Cook <laughs> from doing anything. If you yeah, so if you hook the Diva, she just gets bubbled. If you hook the Zarya, she gets matrixed. And then it's just like a vicious cycle of you not doing anything throughout the whole game. And I guess up penultimately, we've spoken a bit already this week about the impact of main tanks, certainly in like ranked ladder and stuff. Hog seems to be a culprit for some of the problems that he causes Winston and stuff like that, but Generally, what's your opinion of like the main tanks and like the state of tanks in Bryant's ladder at the moment? Kind of barring Roadhog, because I think Roadhog's all right. Roadhog, <clears throat> Roadhog has this self-sustainability and uh, damage reduction which no other tank has, right? So it makes it so he doesn't get punished as, as much because he can do more solo play in rank. That it's there's a lot of like uh, team play required to play Ryan, Monkey, like that stuff like that. That's why more teams are like uh, in comp I've seen it at least Diva and Hog doing a lot of uh, a lot of work compared to the traditional monkey Ryan stuff. So that's like the main reason there is because there just isn't the coordination needed for Ryan to get as much value he as he needs. The same thing with Monkey. And is that a bit of a problem then? Do you think that tanks are kind of getting screwed at the moment? Yeah, I mean, if you really wanted to, as a main tank player, you could try to transition over to Arissa at the moment, who's actually really strong um, and has this self-sustainability that Hog kind of has to, a, to an extent, but <laughs> the main tanks are really suffering. They've always suffered from this in rank. It hasn't just been now, like, especially when Hog had the stronger one-shot combo, it was even worse for them back then. And I guess sort of finally then, any last things that you kind of want to go over, golden rules or golden tips when it comes to playing Hog and... Where can people find like more hog gameplay from yourself? Because you've started streaming as well, so yeah, I recently started streaming at smex underscore w on Twitch. Um, well, I guess I can give you like my most basic trick is uh, like the 180. So you just pretend that you don't realize the tracer is shooting you, and then all of a sudden you do the 180, and then halfway through your turn in animation, if you throw the hook, uh, by the time you do finish the 180 you'll uh, just instantly hook the tracer pretty much because um, I don't know there's no like animation she doesn't have any time to dodge it if she's like not expecting you to do the 180 and then that's my like that's the one trick I like to do against tracers just pretend that they're not there and then just switch around on them and then I actually wait I don't see any other hulks really utilize this a lot but if you melee animation, it looks like you're throwing the hook sometimes to Tracers and Genjis. And you can just force cooldowns by doing that. I've, I've forced trances before just by meleeing at the Zen from like a distance. So <laughs> it definitely works. I would advise like uh, using that more when... Um, especially when they've seen you and you can't... You don't guarantee that 100% hook anymore. Just melee at them and hopefully they use a cooldown and then you can hook straight after. Especially on a Tracer, if she blinks the first one and you just hook where she blinks straight away, she's not expecting you to hook her twice in theory. So you might just win the mind game that way. But um, if you uh, if you want to see more tick tricks and stuff like that, then I guess uh, my stream is always there, open to the viewers. And that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Do check out Smex. He is an incredible Roadhog player. And certainly if you want to get better at the hero, then it's a good opportunity to watch him and learn from the pro himself. But thank you very much for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.